Hello and welcome to the Metrocast meeting, information meeting, um, December 5th, 2018. We have uh, Ed Merrill here to, of Metrocast to take, um, he's going to do a small presentation and then do any um, answering of questions that you may have or comments. Welcome. Okay. Thank you for coming. Thank you, board, for having me here. Thank you um, in the public and the residents for having me here also. What I would like to do, again, my name is Ed Merrill, and I'm the general manager for Metrocast Communications, and I am responsible for uh, the system operations of uh, Metrocast Maine and New Hampshire uh, systems. Um, and so what I want to do tonight is just provide some information before we get into specifics, and, I'm, and I'll be here to, to uh, answer any questions. Um, first of all, just a little bit of uh, information about uh, the Acton system. Uh, we're, it goes over, I'm not going to go over all the information in the packets, but it's available, and I'll, then I will be available for questions, or um, you can email, email me or call me. Um, the Acton system is uh, 91 miles of plant. We passed 2,071 homes, and we have 1,528 subscribers. Um, there is a, um, a, a mistake in the current franchise uh, information. The current franchise was signed on April the 4th, 2008, and it expires on the 3rd, uh, um, March the 31st of 2018. So that's <coughs> coming up. Uh, and, and another thing that's important is uh, the franchise itself is a cable TV franchise. It doesn't regulate uh, or address internet service or telephone service that only address the video service that, that we provide. Um, the cable television transfer. Um, what I think actually got me here um, this evening was that uh, we, um, back earlier in the summer, applied for our uh, franchise to be transferred once Metrocast entered into a uh, sales agreement with uh, Atlantic Broadband. And I'm going to have some information on Atlantic Broadband in our packet here. Um, and some detailed information on the deal is also in the packet, um, which I won't be going into that detail, but the detail is there for people to, uh, to read if they would like. Um, the cable uh, television franchise transfer process is uh, regulated by the FCC. They set up the procedures for it. It's also regulated by the state, and it's regulated by the, um, your local franchise, the franchise that we have here with the town. Uh, it, the process is set up so that the town has the ability to um, make sure that uh, the new owners or the, the, the people that are um, purchasing the system have the requirements and have the ability to manage the current franchise. The current franchise... Um, it will the new owners will take over all the terms, conditions, and uh, and uh, points within the franchise itself? So the franchise doesn't change, and this process is not a renewal process. It's not a bidding process to bring somebody else in. It's it's a process so that the franchising authority um, has the opportunity to um, go through the information that's provided in the FCC form 394 and uh, determine whether or not uh, the new company is qualified um, to operate and own um, the cable TV, cable TV system and the franchise. Uh, the process is set up for 120 days uh, so that um, the cable, the, the franchising authority has to make a determination within 120 uh, days. Uh, we have 33 franchises in our Maine and New Hampshire system. Uh, we have uh, 30 um, that have uh, uh, already passed and, and authorized um, and approved the franchise transfer. We have two that have opted to take no action to allow it to become automatic after 120 days, and we're, and we're here tonight um, knowing that um, the uh, the uh, Acton Select Board has um, voted to pass uh, the uh, transfer, but we're here to, um, to, to follow up with any questions that they may have. Uh, so it's, um, and again, um, you know, Metrocast is, is selling its, its whole company 
uh, to uh, the company that's called uh, Atlantic Broadband. And again, I have information in here. Um, the approval or the den denial of the transfer. The franchising authority, we, the, as the cable operator and owner and, and the franchise holder right now, need to get either approval from the franchising authority for the transfer or the franchising authority takes no action and, and it becomes automatic after 120 days. The franchising authority must base their approval or their den denial on the new company, uh, the new company's ability to legally uh, own and operate a cable system, to technically, uh, that they have the technical ability to own and operate a cable system, and they have the financial qualifications to own and operate a cable system. And um, the information that was provided in the Form 394 that was provided to uh, the um, to the select board uh, really uh, demonstrates those abilities, um, documents those abilities. Uh, a, uh, Atlantic Broadband has been operating cable systems uh, in the United States uh, since 2004. They were purchased by the parent company, Kojiko, which is a Canadian company, which is the fourth largest telecommunication company in, um, in Canada. And um, so all of those, uh, those, that criteria of legally um, technical ability and financial qualifications um, are demonstrated by uh, the new company owning and operating cable systems uh, uh, now and um, in the past. Uh, also, as part of this process, um, the franchising authority, the select board, uh, has to ensure that the incumbent owner, that's Metrocast, uh, ha is in compliance with the current franchise, the terms and conditions of the current franchise. Uh, and if there is any terms and conditions that the current franchise holder is not in compliance, the select board has to notify the, um, the, the cable company and give the cable company um, the opportunity to cure those uh, to cure those um, uh, non-compliance issues. Now, a little bit about Atlantic Broadband. Um, they are a wholly owned subsidiary, subsidiary of Kojiko. Like I mentioned, Kojiko Cable Inc. And Kojiko is the fourth largest cable TV um, provider, telecommunications provider in um, Canada. ABB uh, is the, lar the ninth largest cable operator in the United States. Um, ABB currently provides video, internet, and telephone services to approximately 239,000 customers. ABB serves customers in, located in five operating regions, Western Pennsylvania, Miami Beach, uh, Delaware, uh, Maryland and Delaware, Aiken, South Carolina, and Eastern Connecticut. Atlantic Broadband is headquartered in Quincy, Massachusetts, and there's more information about the company uh, with press releases on its ABB, Atlantic ABB uh, website. Part of the, um, the, the information that is provided to uh, the franchising authority um, through the form, uh, FCC form 394, uh, again, um, you know, uh, um, demonstrates that ABB is legal, le legally can assume all the terms and conditions uh, and the responsibilities of the franchise. ABB um, plans to hire all the current Metrocast employees working for the New Hampshire and Maine systems now. And ABB has a proven track record of successfully uh, integrating Met Metrocast systems uh, into the ABB um, system. Uh, two years ago, Metrocast purchased uh, the Connecticut uh, system uh, from Metrocast and has been operating it for two years. So they bought a uh, Metrocast system and they, uh, they've they already integrated that system into the uh, Atlantic Broadband uh, operation. Uh, it's important to also note that, um, that Metrocast cable uh, communications was not on the market. We weren't for sale. Um, we were approached by Atlantic Broadband um, first to buy our Connecticut system uh, after they purchased our Connecticut system, um, they um, really realized it was a good fit for their operation and uh, then approached um, uh, Metrocast to purchase the rest of the company. And that happened earlier this year. And again, so part of the, uh, part of the exhibit, Exhibit 2 here, uh, in form, uh, 
FCC Form 394, talks about the changes um, that um, ABB is planning. And, and the best way to demonstrate that is after it purchased the Kinetic Metrocast, Metrocast Connecticut system, it introduced um, TiVo uh, into their system, so it, it provided another very popular, award-winning um, converter box that uh, is available to, uh, to the customers of, uh, of uh, Metro, the former Metrocast system. Uh, it also allowed for uh, other services, over-the-top services, such as Netflix, YouTube, uh, HBO Go, into the, in, built into the box. So if you're a customer, you can get it through the, through the um, uh, TiVo box with a click on the remote. Uh, they doubled the internet speeds and launched a gigabit internet service for uh, residential customers, not just for businesses. They, um, they offer a new, a new suite of services uh, which will provide customers more choice uh, than what they currently have. Uh, they also launched enhanced business services. Um, they focus on business customers. So uh, they'll, you, any business, what, no matter what the size, will be, get, will be able to get anything from standard small business packages all the way up to direct fiber connections uh, with uh, gigabit service or more. Um, and they also introduced two-hour service call appointment windows. Um, the, I uh, included, will not go through, but included the actual Exhibit 2 of Form 394 for the FCC um, in, in the packet. So that's the information. Again, what, we're, what this is about is a franchise transfer. It's not a renewal. It's not a uh, competitive uh, um, uh, point where um, we compete against other uh, providers. It is to find out whether or not the, the company buying the system is qualified to buy it and whether or not uh, Metrocast Communication has lived up to all the ter terms and conditions of the current franchise. Um, one of the things that I've been watching these meetings and I've, I've listened to uh, the discussions about uh, Metrocast service and, and, um, and, and cable service in general. And so what I, I took the opportunity to include a comparison these are 2017 rates of not only Metrocast, but we, we also know that Spectrum provides service to a portion of Acton. And uh, Dish and Direct, uh, we um, included uh, services that are um, very similar, as similar as we could possibly get, and put the prices across the board. And one of the things that um, I think that uh, you will find that all of these services um, all of these companies go to the same providers to get their programming. There are six really main um, TV content providers. Uh, companies like ESPN, ABC, Disney, uh, and all of the content that they own. Um, cable companies have to go to them, sign contracts, and in those contracts, it really uh, mandates where, um, you know, where those channels are put, um, uh, what other channels have to be carried along with them, um, and each one of these companies uh, deal with that, uh, with that programming um, condition. The only thing that really changes is the promotional um, offers that each one of these different companies provide. And um, so some companies have contracts, some companies allow you to uh, you know, have, if you sign up for certain periods of time or certain services, um, you will um, you'll be able to get reduced rates. Also, the, the packages are different. I didn't put all the different packages, what those packages are on this, uh, in this particular um, chart, uh, because that's a lot of information. But if you go on to each one of these, each one of the services, we tried to get as, as close as possible to the packages, but each one of these packages are, are different. Um, what, I, what I did also is, is um, I was able to uh, get a current uh, spectrum bill and on the sheet where it says price comparison, there is a mistake uh, here as well um, where at the bottom where it says uh, uh, the first one, uh, Keene, New Hampshire, tax fees, $13, that's actually Acton and uh, where it says Acton, that's actually Keene. I wasn't able to get an Acton um, 
uh, I mean a uh, an act in spectrum bill so I couldn't compare them um, head to head but they're pretty uh, I think they're pretty similar I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Could you say that again? sure where it says where it says taxes and fees yep. that should be Acton and where it says Acton that should be keen and you'll see that um, when we go through I've actually included the bills uh, in the packet I've taken off the customer information and what I did was I was able to find um, and this was on you know fairly short notice I was able to find a spectrum bill and an Acton customer um, that had um, similar services and so the services um, that they had were you know were internet and video products they're the same video packages um, they are uh, the same or, or close internet pa packages I couldn't confirm whether or not um, the spectrum customer had more than 60 uh, megabits but I included it anyway and what you will find when you look at both of these bills separate companies spectrum a much larger company than um, than Metrocast is that after you subtract the taxes the bills come out to um, Metrocast bill for the same services is one hundred and eighty eight dollars and ninety one cents and the and the spectrum bill is one hundred and eighty eight dollars and twenty six cents so here's a here, here's a head-to-head -head comparison um, of active customers right now uh, one in Acton uh, one a spectrum customer in Keene and you can you can see that um, the uh, main customers are paying significantly more taxes 1389 to be exact there's a seven dollar and 86 um, uh, service provider uh, tax which they don't charge uh, in New Hampshire so I mean this is just a comparison and again the point here is that um, when you take a look at the comparisons of services and 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 it's it's more difficult on the chart but if you look at the services and compare them side to side you'll see that um, the rates are very um, um, compatible and comparable and you'll see that with video services as well um, and just quick quickly to go through some of the franchise terms and conditions and some of those conditions that um, I'm almost through okay, okay. Um, so uh, terms and conditions terms and conditions of the franchise um, itself does impact the rates that uh, custom rates in, in every system and in this particular current franchise uh, we just want to look at the the the, the um, grant amounts and the and the requirements um, in the franchise that the cable <coughs> that the cable company paid to uh, the uh, the town to be able to use its right of ways and we'll get into that uh, and and one of the things that when you do the comparison charts and you look at the if you look at the the uh, dish providers dish and direct um, one of the things to I think um, keep in mind is that uh, in most cases if you're a satellite um, uh, customer you own the equipment and it's your responsibility to make sure the equipment is repaired or get it back to them or however um, you do it but what you don't have is you don't have the requirement you, you don't have attachments to utility poles you don't rent utility poles you're not taking care of uh, the plant that provides the signal you're not um, you're not paying technicians um, that are in the area and you don't have a local office satellite um, providers rates are based on what cable companies rates are they go um, to the point where they're just below cable TV rates but they should be significantly lower because they don't have the expenses or the cost of providing the services um, and they don't provide these services so here's the requirement of uh, we had capital grants in this franchise for twenty five thousand um, dollars we had a capital grant for an INET to connect uh, municipal buildings for five thousand dollars and we provide municipal internet service to three accounts uh, in the building at a cost of or a value of two, $2,338 per year or over the life of the franchise $23,000 so just in this particular page alone it shows the require it shows um, commitments of $53,000 and $300, uh, $380 $53,382 um, so 
again, we're providing this to the town for the ability, as a private company, to come in here and use the right-of-ways to provide service. You, you, don't get this, uh, you don't get this benefit from satellite companies, and, but satellite companies are getting the benefit of being able to go onto the website and see uh, these meetings that are, uh, that are provided by the equipment um, that is provided in the cable TV franchise. So the cable TV customers are actually paying for that uh, benefit. Franchise fees. Franchise fees are what um, the, uh, the actual cost of what is charged to a cable company to provide um, uh, cable service to a town to use their right-of-ways. Uh, if you're a utility company, you don't have to pay franchise fees because you're a utility. We're a private business. We have to pay to use those right-of-ways. And um, the uh, FCC allows um, a community to collect up to 5% of the gross revenues from a cable TV operation. And uh, the town of Acton um, has us collect um, the 5% the of the gross revenues. 2016, we paid the town of uh, Acton. Uh, it, that was actually paid in seven, 2017, $41,000, uh, $434 um, for um, the franchise fees that we collect from our video customers. And based on the average 10-year term, that's $400,000. Again, $400,000 we're collecting from our video customers for the ability to provide um, service uh, to, um, to the community, to our customers here. Uh, and again, this, um, something that I didn't, and I would like to still emphasize, is this is not an exclusive franchise. The town at any point in time can go out to any other provider or any other provider can come here and, um, and uh, request to be able to uh, provide uh, cable service. What makes um, cable service uh, pretty much, you know, only one provider uh, other than uh, dish services in a community especially in rural communities, is just the cost of building the system and ma maintaining the system. That infrastructure is expensive. The lower the density, the more expensive it is um, to, provide, uh, to provide cable service. Uh, in, um, I've also included in here a, uh, a uh, an amount, a, a spreadsheet of the number of service calls that um, we have uh, done in the town by month um, since 2013. Uh, and I think what's important about this chart is that it stays pretty constant, it stays pretty level, it's actually at a lower point. You don't see spikes other than in the summertime when you have more people here are taking service. So that, that is, um, I'm, I'm, that's a pretty telling thing. And the other, the other thing of, that's important is that 70% of the service problems that we go out to in, uh, in, with our customers are actually inside the customers' homes. And, and that's understandable. There's more services in there. There's more connections in there. Um, more people are using um, the internet now. Uh, there's more devices in people's homes. Uh, it is, um, it, you know, it's understandable that, 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 um, uh, that those issues are in people's homes. But again, this, this reflects and shows uh, and documents that there's no spikes, there's, it's not, service is not getting worse, but we are providing more services and more, more um, integrated services, uh, more uh, complex services into people's homes, um, with wireless especially. This is, just a, uh, this is just a press release that goes into detail about the sale. Um, this is our cost comparison in the charts that we have here is um, there were 2017 rates. Um, these are the 2018 rates that will go into, uh, go into effect in January of 2018 for Metrocast services. We've included, I've included a current channel lineup with the packages that are highlighted so you can see what packages go with what um, services. I've included a, um, an article, a recent article that many people here may be familiar um, with um, the phrase uh, 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 cord cutting, um, which really uh, reflects the number of uh, customers that are, are uh, disconnecting their video services and getting their video services um, from over-the-top providers, Netflix, Hulu, uh, YouTube. Um, this article 
uh, goes into detail why that's happening, but it also explains that small cable operators are now um, positioning themselves to also cut the cord. And what does that mean? That, that, that providing video services is a no margin to a minus margin business for uh, cable operators because of the cost of programming. And um, they um, are looking at not making uh, video available um, and allowing customers to go and, uh, and get video service from other providers. Also, uh, in, uh, I thought that this was important. Um, this, uh, you, not everybody has this map, but I'll send it around. Um, these, are, these are towns that are very close to, um, pass that around. very close to uh, Acton on the New Hampshire border. Um, that we provide service uh, to those areas, to those communities. Uh, a, um, a telephone company called TDS came in and purchased the, uh, the uh, older telephone company and went in and rebuilt um, the telephone infrastructure and is now providing to those small areas um, because they had the infrastructure on the poles. They didn't come in and build it. They came in and rebuilt it, are now offering um, competitive services uh, in those areas. Um, that is something that um, your telephone company um, can provide right now. If it had the if it had the uh, resources to do so, but here's a small cable company going out and rebuilding small communities and providing direct um, direct competition, and that's and that's very near here. Um, what I've also included in this um, in our packet is a, uh, um, a, a contact form. It is my contact information at the bottom here. I have my cell phone number on this sheet. Um, I'm available 24-7, and um, I will work with anyone that has a problem that feels like they haven't been able to get that problem resolved through the normal channels. You can call me. You can email me. I will, um, I will be committed to um, addressing any issue and resolving any problem with any customer. And uh, in several of our, our, uh, our towns, um, where I've made this available, have actually put this on uh, the town's website so that, that if, it has, if you have a cable complaint, you can go um, to this and um, I will work with you uh, on an individual basis to make sure that your um, service is, um, is um, corrected and resolved, the, the issues. Uh, I've also, the last piece is uh, the current um, uh, prices for all the services that we have so that you can take a look at them. It's broken down. That's what I have. Thank you for listening to me. Now, um, how would you like to go forward? Uh, we'll open it to questions or um, comments like we do in our meetings. We'll do like a three-minute timer. So just approach the pod uh, podium with your name if you have any questions or comments. Hi, my name is Lois Mishu. I live here in town. I've lived here almost all my life. I live on the Milton Mills Road. We were actually one of the first ones that got Metrocast. My only complaint is to this. I got rid of, I've actually gotten rid of the TV part. I've had enough. I actually went to try to get your cable boxes and, and add to it. My TVs are all upgraded. They have HD. I actually tried to get people to help me. They wouldn't help me, so I took it all back, and I'm done with it. The only thing I have right now is Internet, and actually that's getting pretty bad. I've had them come out three times just this past summer alone to correct a problem that's not even inside. It's outside internally, and now it's going gonna, it's gonna to be going up again. What, the only other question I got is Lebanon is actually part of Metrocast also. They got a finance fee that's less than us. Why do they, how can they get away with that? It's all based on there's some communities that don't collect franchise fees um, at all. They opt not to, so that doesn't show up on the bill. It um, does show on the bill, but it's a lot less it's than lower. what we yes. got. So they have an option of anything from 1% to 5%. Mm -hmm. And so... Um, it's it's just so it's why there. do you so what does this town choose five percent we're paying twice we're paying once to get to get the information then we're paying again to have the services that aren't that great I'm sorry and if if I if you would please call me contact me I will work with you to make sure that that your issue is resolved personally so I just to clarify if the percentage is based on how the services you're getting. So if you're getting, a, you know, two hundred dollars worth of services, it's going to be higher than somebody getting a hundred dollars worth of services. 
to help Absolutely. Viewers? It's and it's only on the video services. Video. So if it and that includes the number of boxes you have in your home, um, the level of service that you're getting. So it, it does depend on the the um, the, the total amount of, of uh, video services that you pay for. Okay. That's not right because I get charged for it on my, actually I get charged for it on my, just my internet alone. They charge me up to $5 a, a month on top of everything else for the fee. I'm willing to check your bill. Well, you're more than welcome. Yes. Thank you. I also live on the Milton Mills Road. Must be something about that road, I don't know, because our video service is terrible. And you know, we pay you. We get internet service and video service, so we're paying you. We're a little over 100 bucks a month because it's basic cable. And all I care about is listening to the news. And inevitably, Channel 10 public broadcasting at the time I sit down to watch it disappears. You know, I think I know why, and I'm I'm willing to blame them. Channel 10, main public broadcasting, but it's it's awful. I mean, I question why we're why I'm paying you uh, for that service. The rest of the basic cable we get is is useless. So the the content, what you call the content, is awful. Uh, the service is awful. So here's my question: uh, Is this change to Atlantic Broadcasting does that have anything to do with the franchise renewal? It does not. Does not. So that's you're going to be back, or whoever is representing Atlantic Broadcasting is going to be back in March. Yes, or before March. Or before March to renew that. Yes. Number two question: What part of Acton is serviced by Spectrum? Um, I couldn't. I didn't realize that we had somebody else in town. I couldn't tell you, and <coughs> I think that it it had to do with uh, um, poll continuity, but I, I I didn't research that. All right. So that'll be of interest. So. I, I mean, I can't tell you how terrible it is. And you're, when you call the 800 number, you're talking to somebody in Pennsylvania or whatever. I mean, and they try, but inevitably it's, you know, you don't get any reaction to that's helpful. So anyway, thank you. Hello. Uh, my name is Ginger Roberts. I'm actually from Shapley, but a lot of my family lives here in Acton, so I'm talking with them as well. Um, a few questions I had. So you keep saying video services, but this is also for the internet, correct? They're purchasing the whole thing or just video? They're purchasing the whole thing, but okay. the only thing that is regulated and what we're here for is to, to, uh, to transfer the franchise, and the franchise is just for video service. Okay. And with the integrated, like the YouTube, the Netflix, obviously the younger kids, that's all well and good. And I, I have just as many problems in Shapley with my Metrocast as these guys do in Acton. Do, is there going to be anything additional hardware they need for their televisions? Or is it going to just, you're, they're going to be able to get that without any additional smart TVs or anything like that? It will be a new box that they bring into your house. That so. they have to purchase? Um, no, it'll, it'll still be on the same rental basis. Okay, so the, it'll be another rental fee? It'll be, be a different, it's not an additional. Addition. <laughs> it will be, uh, okay. and, I, and I can't tell you what those charges are right now. I can tell you that people are very happy with the, with the TiVo boxes. Okay, so the, the um, actual papers that you gave us with Spectrum and uh, Metrocast and the other one, they're, they give the prices, but it doesn't give what these guys' prices are, you know, like what the, what was it, Coggo or whatever. So what their prices, I mean, is obviously when I looked at like the 2018 prices, it looks like everything's like $2 more. So obviously there's going to be an increase because a lot of the services are $2 more here, $2 more there. So... <coughs> Is it going to be, you know, a significant? I mean, honestly, for a lot of people here in the town, like you know, ten, fifteen dollars is a huge difference in billings. So I'm just um, I know that they'll have different packages and different prices for those packages. Um, I can't tell you what it is, but I, I do understand that there's not going to be an additional rate increase for the services that we're increasing the services for now. Um, but that, but but that decision's up to Atlantic Broadband. Um, I'm still a Metrocast employee, and so when, when do we they know when we'll get those, like we'll we'll know how much, or we're we just going to get a bill. It's like, oh, here's a new. No, no. <laughs> um, there has it. That's regulated as well, and as as um, you know, that you will get notices as up to six, as much as 60 days prior to any increases. Mm -hmm. Those, the, that's federal regulation, okay. and so that has to happen if there's going to be any changes. So whatever changes there's going to be in prices or packaging, 
those notices have to go out to you and to our customers before any changes is made. Okay, and one last question. I, I know talking to a whole bunch of people. So it seems to be like the internet goes down for like two or three hours randomly in different spots. Is I mean, like a, on a consistent basis, like between five and seven, it's not where. Is there a reason for that? Is we can uh, we can monitor right down to the pole, so we can take a look, and we do 24/7. Oh, I know because when the electric was out from the hurricane, they knew that I wasn't getting anything in my house. So. so we can check that. So we can go back and take a look at it. And I and I would encourage you to contact me. We can take a look at anybody's service and 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 find out um, the level of their service, the quality of their service that goes right to the pole before their house. But so not. We can find okay. out if we have a problem. Okay. Thank you. Hello, my name is Gary Bernarczyk. I live on Garvin Road. Um, we have, we currently have the video service and internet service. The question I have is right now your service is encrypted. And each one of our TVs has a little encryption box or decoder. Uh, are they going to have the same thing or is their TiVo DVR going to be encrypted also and then we have to have a TiVo box for every one of our TVs? You'll have to have a box. You don't have to opt for a TiVo box for every one of the televisions. But the encryption is required by our contracts with the uh, with the programmers. Um, they they the programmers gave every provider um, a time period where they had to encrypt their services uh, because prior we we waited to the last minute before we did it. Um, prior to that, um, let's just say that that uh, there was. Um, security issues in, in apartment and condo complexes that the uh, programmers felt that they weren't getting um, paid for. So it was um, one of our uh, requirements as far as getting service from them was to encrypt our service. Everybody does. Satellite, every cable company, everybody encrypts. Is there any uh, uh, provision for getting like little chips for our TVs so we don't have to have another box, or, another um, remote control for our there are cable cards. Um, there, I don't believe that they're two-way, uh, but um, um, there are smaller boxes. Um, the the DTAs, which are 195, uh, for uh, to to connect, and they have HD service. Um, those are the options. But there, but there are cable card options. So, thank you. Hi, Kathleen Stevens. I live on Garvin Road as well. Um, I'm just curious about the internet. I know you said that this is all about the video because that's what's being transferred over, but obviously we're still getting our internet through the same company. And I'm, we, we frequently have times when it just says um, that the, there's not enough bandwidth available. And I'm just curious as to Upgrading of the lines. I know that Maine put in the three ring binder, which is supposed to bring really high speed internet to all of us. And, you know, I don't know how old the lines are. I'm really kind of curious if there are some plans to upgrade and what, you know, Atlantic Broadband may do. We, we continually upgrade mm -hmm. um, our service. We get fiber deeper into each one of the neighborhoods on a continuous basis. Um, we, in, uh, as Metrocast, invest millions of dollars year after year in, in the network. But uh, one of the things that uh, Atlantic Broadband did in Connecticut after they purchased a Metrocast system, doubled the speeds and offered um, uh, one gig service to residential homes. So yes, they focus on, they want to improve the, the, the speeds of the services. They do invest in improving the speeds of the services. And I can't, as a Metrocast person, commit to it, but I can tell you that um, within two years, of uh, purchasing um, the uh, Metrocast system in Connecticut, they upgraded. I imagine that will be part of their pitch to the town when they try and get the contract. I would imagine it would be. Um, it will be a process, and I and and it'll happen um, over the first 12 months. Uh, they'll come in with a plan to um, to change the name of the company. To um, you know, if they're going to change bills, 
but you will be updated. But nobody will have to come to your house unless um, when, when you get a letter and they said that these new services are available and you want to subscribe to a service other than what you have, then it will require somebody to come to, to the home on the most part. Did you have any questions? I do not. I, I think um, she asked, asked um, the question I was going to ask was upgrading the lines with the internet service being spotty and as well as um, Mr. Nass's uh, TV station that doesn't get in, come in when he wants it to come in. What, like, can you explain what happens at that time period? All, I really can't diagnose an issue from here, so I can't tell you what's going on. But what I can commit to is working with you to make sure that we have somebody come out there. And if it's a neighborhood, if it's your in, we, we should st always start from the individual home so that we can start there and see what the problem is and work our way back out. Um, like I said, we, we continually upgrade the, even now, continually upgrade our, our, our lines and our system. Uh, one of the questions tonight or complaints was that it's really hard to get a hold of a, a person that's local to actually diagnose the problem. So the best way right now is to contact you directly. <laughs> Call me directly. Are you staying with the company? I am. With um, with Atlantic Broadband. Pardon me. There will be no more Metrocast. They're buying the whole company. I'm Barbara Horn. Um, I, don't, I wondered if you're familiar at all with this Atlantic Broadband company. I see where they have been in the past. I know when Fairpoint came into New England from the south one of their big problems, they were going to do all this lines, put up all these multiple million dollars worth of lines, and then they realized, well, Maine, New Hampshire, Vermont is not flat. <laughs> we're not Miami. Got lots of hills, mountains, rivers to cross. And they did not provide the service that they said they were going to. And most people felt like running them out of the region. So I'm wondering, I see these people, Western PA, that's Pittsburgh, pretty urban. Miami Beach, pretty urban. Maryland, Delaware, I'm not familiar with Aiken, South Carolina, Eastern Connecticut, but they're all pretty populated areas. I, um, I was the general manager for the Connecticut system before I moved up here for uh, Metrocast, and I can tell you that uh, it is very similar. Um, where we, we went up, if you're familiar with it, all our systems were up 395. Once we left Waterford and uh, New London, we went right up 395. So if you know, if you're familiar with 395, then it is a it, it's it's very rural and very much like the area we're in. But as part of our uh, as part of this process and what the FCC puts in place is. Um, they have to provide the information to the select board to show them that they are financially, uh, they have the finances to be able to operate this system. And, I, and, I, and they also have the track record um, that proves that they continue to not only operate the systems, but upgrade the systems and grow the systems. So it's up to these three selectmen to determine whether or not they have the know-how. From what I understand, they all provide the service, not just I'll, the finances. I'll but let they them have the respond. crews that can work in this kind of environment this They're, far north. Before they respond, I'd, I'd just like to say that um, uh, that also the 33 other um, communities that we operate in uh, here, um, 31 of them made the decision. Um, and they used uh, a number of outside councils and groups to determine whether or not um, uh, they thought uh, that, that they could determine whether or not uh, Atlantic Broadband was qualified or Kojiko was qualified. So they've already approved um, using outside sources um, to uh, allow the transfer. Thank you, Barbara. Good questions. Uh, Paul Poyant, um, what is the expectation regarding changes to Metrocast.net email addresses? Uh, I assume it's going to be required and would happen shortly after a company name change? 
I, I, um, I'm not quite sure how they're going to handle that. What I can tell you is they're buying the whole company, and so they're buying Metrocast. So the, I believe they're going to own um, that. And, and, and I'm not sure, I'm not that familiar with how that change would be made. I know they'd want it to be Atlantic Broadband, but they own the, you know, they own So the, if we're uh, lucky, we would be able to have the option of keeping it instead of having the aggravation of having to change all of our contacts uh, and maybe just new customers would get the new names. Who knows? I, I can tell you that when I was in Connecticut and they didn't buy the whole company, the, the customers had to change. Right. The, now they own everything. So they own the rights to Metrocast or anything else they yes. want to change it to. So we'll wait and see, I guess. Thanks. I actually have a, a Roadrunner email. Yep. Bought out by Time Warner, bought out by Spectrum. Didn't that start works. as AOL? I, I don't know. I never had AOL. Yeah. But my Roadrunner is still working. Well, if there's no more questions or comments, I'd like to thank Ed for coming out. And I'm sure we'll meet again. Sounds like so. we've got a lot to talk about. <laughs> and um, yes, you do. <laughs> thank you all for coming out. Good night. Thank you.